The trailer for The Acolyte has shown us many things of what is to come in the series. In the trailer, we see a group of Jedi facing off against a lone Darksider wielding a crimson blade, one that holds immense power. And that was the most eye-catching part of the whole two-minute preview. This ended off with a group of Jedi sprinting towards the unknown foe, but there was something about this moment that caught our attention. Namely, that it is basically impossible for this Darksider to be a Sith. The massive power they wield and the Crimson Blade may tip us off to the idea that they are indeed a Sith, but we don't believe this to be the case at all. We know this should not be possible according to the lore and the timeline. Many have expected the Acolyte to follow a girl training into Sithhood, but we have come to believe that this may not be the case, at least not initially. So today, my friends, join us as we reveal our thoughts on what we should be expecting from the Acolyte, what an Acolyte actually is, why they are not a Sith, and what to expect, as well as where the Sith are hiding and the major role that they will eventually play. We see in the trailer what we assume to be the Acolyte herself in a showdown against eight Jedi. With the main Jedi Master being among them, she shows off her red lightsaber and uses a Force Repulse to blast them all away. But it shouldn't be possible for this dark side wielder to be a Sith, because it wouldn't make sense for the Sith to reveal themselves to the Jedi so early. By this point in the timeline, Sith did a very good job at keeping themselves hidden for 900 years. It's not likely for one of them to show themselves to a large group of Jedi. Not to mention we know that in The Phantom Menace, Sidious had intended Maul to be the one to reveal that the Sith had returned. There are a few possible scenarios for the scene to take place though. Either this is the moment that the Rule of Two is revealed to the Jedi, since Yoda and Mace Windu knew of this in The Phantom Menace, or every single one of these Jedi will perish in battle. The latter is very unlikely, since the main Jedi Master we are following is among them. Clearly, he is likely to survive in the narrative, so he would have to report this incident to the Jedi High Council, breaking the lore. So the only way it's possible for this interaction to fully take place is if the Acolyte in that moment is not a Sith, at least not yet. In fact, just based off of what we've seen so far in the trailer, we believe and are not convinced that we'll see any Sith and no Sith will be revealed until the very end of the series. Perhaps there is a misconception about what the name of the show actually means, as an acolyte does not necessarily mean a Sith. In canon, we know of one other character that has been officially termed as a dark side acolyte, that being Asajj Ventress. This term essentially means that she is a dark Jedi trained in the ways of the Sith, but one who is not a Sith themselves. The Sith Order keeps their secrets very close and only teaches their most powerful lessons to true apprentices. Acolytes, on the other hand, are merely tools to be used for their purposes, but never to progress beyond that as a weapon. A Sith and a Dark Acolyte has very different relationships than the Master and an Apprentice does, which was why Dark Acolytes were completely fine to have in accordance with the Rule of Two and didn't break the ideology around one Master and one Apprentice. But we do expect our main girl to serve the Sith in some way, at least later on. A Dark Jedi, though, may classify themselves as an Acolyte if they obey the teachings of the Sith, but haven't found a Sith Master to properly teach them or give them the title. We believe that this is what our main character is going to be venturing on, an aspiring Sith Lord, but not an official one yet. The first season will entail a large mystery of who exactly is killing Jedi, while also following the Acolyte who is actively searching for the Sith. In this era, they are distinctly extremely difficult to find though. Sith and the Rule of Two usually find their own apprentices. They are not sought out. The only person we know of who sought out their own master in the Rule of Two was that of Darth Vectivus. There were several things in this trailer though to tip us off that we won't actually be seeing the Sith until much later. One of those being all of the locations that we are shown. They are remote areas in the wide galaxy, backwater wild planets, small towns, and ancient ruins. To put it simply, all of these locations is where the Sith shouldn't be around this time period. The show takes place in roughly 132 BBY, and this means that this is the era when the Sith are actually in the background of the galaxy, gaining more and more power. They're not going to be hiding in caves and seedy cantinas. They're going to be in corporate offices, parties in high society, and industrial complexes. We know for a fact that the creator of the show, Leslie Headland is interested in exploring the story of how the Sith came to power, especially before Palpatine gained power in the Senate. And this is the quote from one of her interviews. I was so interested in a storyline where the Jedi were at the height of their power. And I don't mean the Phantom Menace, because at that point, there's a Sith Lord in the Senate. 
they're not picking up on him. If the Acolyte is searching for a Sith, and we are going to be exploring how they rose to power, the natural question is, what are the Sith doing right now in the galaxy? We've talked about this before, but the fact is that the Sith are underdogs. They have eaten a huge slice of humble pie and have been forced to acknowledge that nothing they do has worked before or conquered the Jedi. The Sith are doing fieldwork now, which lends more credit to the idea that the Darksider in the trailer is not a Sith. The Sith are transforming and evolving into something new, become something more dangerous. No longer did the Sith believe that the War of the Dark and Light can be won on a literal battlefield. They have tried that before, and they have failed. For 900 years, the Sith have been licking their wounds from the final battle of Rusan, where they didn't go out in some blaze of glory, but with a cheap whimper. Forced to be destroyed because of the Brotherhood of Darkness and losing the way, Darth Bane, the creator of the Rule of Two, was forced to remake them. That story, of course, is Legends right now, but it is still hugely important to the overall narrative of what the Sith want revenge for. It is this very specific event that Maul and Sidious speak of when they talk of their revenge. In fact, very soon we are going to be releasing a video all about this exact battle and why it was the most humiliating defeat that the Sith had ever suffered. But the point is, they understand that lightsabers aren't going to get them control of the galaxy. No amount of warships, military power, dark side rituals, or alliances are going to allow them to topple the Jedi from their seat of power. They must become a venom, a poison which seeps into the arteries of the Republic's bureaucracy and breaks it down from within. That all begins with getting themselves in places of power. And a hundred years before the Phantom Menace, where the Acolyte takes place, this is where they will be found. In this point in time, companies and aristocrats were gaining more power within the Senate, and the corruption was fresh. The Sith are stoking the fires of that corruption, as they're the ones greasing the palms of senators and getting good with high society. So where are the Sith? Well, they're building wealth and prestige. They're business entrepreneurs, stockbrokers, and bankers. In fact, if we are to place the timelines of canon and legends parallel to one another, we can tell you exactly who the Dark Lord is right now and what they're doing. And there might even be the possibility that we get hints of them in this show. Importantly, Leslie Headland directly stated that they took major inspiration from stories of Star Wars legends, and potentially even characters. So with all of that said, who is the Sith Lord right now during the Acolyte? In the Legends timeline, the Sith who is the Dark Lord is known as Darth Tenebris. His public persona is Rugus Gnome, a starship designer whose constructs were delivered only to elite members of rising power. Among these influential beings, politicians were more often found in conjunction with entrepreneurs, bankers, and industrialists. The Sith were making friends with individuals that could aid them in their cause, using their intelligence, cunning, and yes, the dark side to achieve great power behind the scenes. When we think of the machinations of the Dark Lords during this time, rituals come to mind, when in fact this is not the case. Rather, we should be envisioning business meetings, consultations, and the designing of fine ships. This is how the Sith dig their fangs into the Republic. The Sith's goal, and Tenebris' goal, was to grow a network of contacts and favors in the galaxy, all of which could be traced to the beginning of Darth Bane. Around this era, Darth Plagueis should be a young man in training with Tenebris, as the show takes place in 132 BBY, and in Legends, Plagueis was born sometime around the year 147 BBY. If the Acolyte series does nothing with Tenebris, then we should expect to get some hints at Plagueis. The name that we need to be looking out for, though, is Damask. Plagueis' real name was Higo Damask, and as a Moon, his family was very influential in the intergalactic banking clan. They were the owners of Damask Holdings, and this branch was a very powerful part of the banking clan itself, one which would probably be mentioned or seen somewhere in the series, so look out for the term Damask. The point is, when the series starts moving, the Acolyte is getting closer to finding the Sith. These are the types of names and places that we should be looking out for in the show. All in all, between this possible search quest and the mystery that the Jedi are going to be solving, there should not be a single dull moment in the Acolyte in this time period. But tell us, does this news excite you? 
What are your thoughts on the Sith Lords of this era? What are your thoughts on the Sith broadening their horizons, gaining power in different ways? Ways that will eventually result in the rise of Palpatine as a prominent senator, and eventually the Emperor. Are you looking forward to the Acolyte, and what do you hope to see from the series? As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel, and may the Force be with you.